Mass Effect. This spiritual successor to Bioware's Knights of the Old Republic captured the hearts of millions of gamers with its in-depth and intriguing storyline, as well as its central focus on player choice. But even if you're a hardcore fan of the series, I'm willing to bet there are at least a few things you don't know about Mass Effect. So let's play a game with this video. If you learned something new, I want you to give this video a like. But if you already knew all 10 facts, I want you to leave a dislike guilt-free. Because if you already knew everything, that means I didn't do my job properly. Also, this video will be spoiling all three games, so you have been warned. So without further ado, here are 10 things you didn't know about Mass Effect. During Mass Effect 1, there is a side mission you can do called Rogue VI, which involves going to Earth's moon and destroying a crazy VI that's taken over a base. After you kill it, however, you can see binary displayed on its monitor, and when translated, it reads, Help. I mean, granted, it is a crazy VI that killed people, but on the other hand, it's still kind of sad. So, if I say the ending of Mass Effect 3, what do you think of? Probably that it's awful, and I don't blame you for that, because it is. Although I must say real quick, the indoctrination theory makes it a heck of a lot better. But what you probably don't think about is this little cameo Bioware threw in. At the end of Mass Effect 3, you can see a grandfather talking to his son while looking off at a distant planet. But did you know that the person providing the voice for the grandfather is actually Buzz Aldrin, the second man on the moon? Say what you will about the ending, and it probably will deserve it, but at the very least, give Bioware props for that little addition. Dr. Liara to Sony. She's without question one of the most popular characters in the entire series, which is why I'm willing to bet most players rescued her in Mass Effect 1 fairly early on, if not immediately after getting the chance to do so. But did you know that if you do every other main mission first before rescuing her, she'll actually acknowledge the gap of time? When you find her, she'll have been inside the Prothean barrier for so long that she will constantly think Shepard is an illusion. Then once on the ship, she'll go on and on about how much progress she's made and how she's almost at a major breakthrough regarding the Protheans, only for Shepard to say, Oh, uh, yeah, we basically did all that already, and uh, here's the answers you spent half your life trying to find. In Mass Effect 1, you have to report back to the Council at the end of four important story missions, so you can justify your actions to them. Well, that's what you're supposed to do anyway. If you're like me in despising the Council, I'd recommend you keep hanging up on them at the earliest opportunity. If you do, it'll lead to some pretty funny results. Our role is to offer guidance and advice. It's up to you if you're smart enough to listen. I don't need this. <laughs> Communications cut, Commander. Commander, do not cut me off like last time. I failed to find it amusing. Whoops. And we're out. Commander, is this some kind of game? Are you calling in a report just so you can cut us off again? You know it. That never gets old, does it? On Duchunka in Mass Effect 2, after you complete the side quest, Killing Varen, you can purchase Varen meat at Ratch's shop, which you can then take and feed to the pet Varen Urz. He'll then follow you around the camp, like the big reptile-looking dog that he is, and you can actually enter him in pit fights if you're feeling particularly evil. On the bright side, though, he'll never actually die. He will get hurt if you end up losing the match, but he'll be right as rain if you leave and come back again. In Mass Effect 2, the elusive man is rarely seen without a cigarette, despite the fact that his voice actor, Martin Sheen, doesn't actually smoke. So for every take where the elusive man was smoking, Martin Sheen would actually suck on a pen to simulate the sound. Also, a bit of a side tangent, does it weird anyone else out that cigarettes still exist 200 plus years from now? During the Lair of the Shadow Broker DLC, you can see two interesting trivia bits concerning everyone's favorite party member, Jack. Firstly, during the car chase scene, you can see a giant wanted poster for Jack, and you can note that her prison number is 24601. That is a reference to Les Miserables, where the main character Jean Valjean has the same prison number. 
Second is that in her Shadow Broker dossier, you can see that in the past, she went under the alias Jacqueline Knott. Jacqueline is, of course, typically the female counterpart to Jack, but not is an English word meaning nothing or zero. You get it? Because cause she's subject zero? <laughs> Did you know that Commander Shepard actually has a wide variety of influences that go into his overall design? For example, he is named after Alan Shepard Jr., who was the first American in space. Another example of this is that the default male face for Shepard is based on the Dutch model Mark Vanderloo. Speaking of which, consider for a moment what it must be like to be Mark Vanderloo, and knowing that there is more porn of you making out with various aliens than of any other model in history. Again, we return to the topic of the Citadel Council. Yeah, those idiots. Oh yes, the Reapers, we have dismissed that claim, you imbecile. <laughs> really, funny that everyone on the Council refuses to believe the Reapers exist, considering what the Council Hall looks like. Yes, friends, the Citadel Council's room is shaped like a Reaper. Like, there's not even a debate there. It's a Reaper. That actually ties into my own personal theory that the Council Room gave off minuscule indoctrination waves, which convinced everyone working that the Reapers aren't an actual threat, but that is unrelated. But regardless of what you think, you cannot deny that Bioware is great at floor shadowing. Did you know that Mass Effect wasn't originally called Mass Effect until very late in the game's development? The original codename for the project was SFX, which stood for, brace yourselves, Science Fiction X. Mm-hmm, good job guys, we're done here, regroup next week. Apparently they used the name for so long that everyone on the team grew attached to it, and no one wanted to change it come release time. Unfortunately for them, and probably pretty fortunately for us actually, SFX was already the name of a long-standing magazine, so they did end up having to change it into the name we all know and love, Mass Effect. So everyone, that was 10 things you didn't know about Mass Effect, and I hope that you enjoyed it. Remember to leave a thumbs up if you learned something new, and of course thumbs down if you knew everything before watching the video, because if that's the case, I didn't do my job properly. Also, I've got more 10 k videos coming very soon, and I want you all to see them, so how about clicking that nice subscribe button there for me? I'd really appreciate it. Also of note is that we're running a Patreon campaign right now to help the channel continue to grow into the future, and I'd really appreciate anyone that had the spare change to help out. Anyways, that's it. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Later.